Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming. We are very delighted to see so many people who are interested in the progress on the Liberty Branch Library. And I just absolutely love talking about this place. So I am really excited to, to have this opportunity to talk to you today. We are a little better than halfway through the 14 month construction process. So it seems like a good time to be talking about it. And I'm gonna start by with a little history. Um, and I'm gonna have to check and see. You never know which button actually, there we go, which button actually advances. So uh, we've had service in Powell from the Delaware County District Library since 1992 when this library opened. This is the Powell Library on uh, Liberty Road in the uh, southern edge of Powell, just across the railroad tracks from Franklin County, basically. It opened in 1992. It's approximately 5,000 square feet. Um, at about the same time that we were uh, opening this, the city, I'm sorry, the Columbus Metropolitan Library and the Worthington Public Libraries were working on collaborating on a new library to be known as Northwest Library, which is about a mile and a half from this location. But it didn't matter how many libraries there were because Powell was growing like crazy. It grew very fast, mostly to the west toward the zoo and north. In 2008, the, the Delaware County District Library passed a 10-year levy to fund the Orange Branch Library, and that opened in 2011. The notes for that library were retired in December of 2019. So during 2018, we uh, had to go back for a renewal of our levy, which passed quite nicely. But one of the pledges we made during that campaign was that we would build a new library to serve Powell and Liberty and Concord townships. So when the 2018 levy passed handily, we went to work on starting to plan our new, our new facility. While we were considering options about where to locate, there was a bit of controversy in Liberty Township. Uh, the township residents rejected the idea of having a Turkey Hill uh, convenience store at the corner of Home and Stites Roads. So the developer, John Wicks, approached us to see if we would be interested in adding a library to that development. He knew that we were talking about this uh, area and so presented it as an option. Our board had a committee to look for a site for the new library and it considered this site along with uh, about three or four other sites in Powell that were available and uh, uh, Powell and Liberty and uh, Concord Townships. But we kept coming back to this home and sites location as the best solution because for one thing, the population was growing very quickly in this area, but there were already established neighborhoods here. We were also only about a half a mile uh, from the big campus of the Olentangy Local School District that includes Olentangy Liberty High School and a number of other middle and elementary schools. Uh, so when Middlebury Crossings plans were approved, this area, this plot of land was annexed into the city of Powell. And so we bought the acreage that we needed uh, from, from John Wicks and their developing firm. Uh, buying about three and a half acres of the land. And it was the area right in here, I think you can see my mouse, but it's the lower right-hand side of this picture that you see. Uh, we had a ceremonial groundbreaking on November 18th of 2020. Then we finished all the contracts with uh, Marker to be our construction manager and SHP to be our architecture firm. And I believe we have representatives of both of those firms on this call. I have to say right at the outset, we have had a wonderful relationship with both the architect and the construction manager. So uh, construction was supposed to begin in March, but due to some issues that we had with the retention ponds and other things, construction didn't actually get underway until June of 2021. So you see this large building here that was originally intended as the library space. But what happened was we decided that instead of uh, having a big one-story building uh, with that massive uh, footprint, we would go for a, a bigger building, but with a smaller footprint. That meant instead of a one-story building, we were going to have to go up. So we actually decided, uh, we being the board of trustees, the architect, and uh, the staff committee that was working on this, that we'd build a three-story building so that we could keep kids and adults on different floors provide plenty of room for growth, and also, and not coincidentally, have enough parking. One of the things we learned from the Orange Library was you can't have too much parking for a library that's uh, going to have a lot of programming, a lot of children's programs especially. 
this plan uh, was a, a building that echoed the plans for the apartments that had been planned for Middlebury Crossing, and also harkened back to the barn structures that once dotted the, litter, uh, the uh, Liberty Township landscape. Also, based on input we, that we got from the community meetings that we held, there would be lots of tie-ins between the outside and the inside in this building. And I'll point these out as we go along. One of the first things that you can see is all the glass. There are lots of windows in this building. There'll be lots of natural light, making it a, a pleasant place to be uh, regardless of the weather. So let's take a look inside the building and see what you're going to see when you come in. As you walk into the library, this is what you'll see from the main entrance. Uh, if you look to the left, and again, I hope you can see my mouse here where I'm pointing, this is a doorway that will lead out to a patio that will be a reading area, probably a three season reading area, right adjacent to the checkout desk, which is right here, and a small reading area right here. Uh, this is a smaller service desk than we have at the Orange Library or at the Delaware Library, because most of the activity that will be handled in, uh, in circulation will be handled behind this wall. Incidentally, this wall is going to be wrapped with welcome messages in the languages that are spoken in the school districts that we serve as part of the Delaware County District Library. So there are 60 some languages spoken in the Olentangy, Delaware, and uh, Buckeye Valley School Districts. And we're gonna be representing that with wall wraps in, in that area. There'll be book displays throughout the library that as you can see here on wheels, and we will have tables like this and shelving units like this that we can move around to have greater flexibility in the building. We've been testing this idea at our Ostrander branch for quite a while and it works really nicely. There will be two elevators in the building. You can see one of them right here, uh, right behind the circulation desk. Another one will be actually just sort of to the right of where you see down this corridor here. So let's take a look at a little more of this floor. If you turn right from the front entrance there, you'll be coming down into our children's area, which is on the first floor. A few things I'd like to point out here is the color coding that you see here. We're gonna be using colors in the building to do use as wayfinding. How you find your way around the building will be kind of color coded back to the prime colors that we use in the library's logo. You'll also notice that the, this, it doesn't show it here, but these shelving units will be on wheels. So again, that they can be moved easily and we can uh, do, uh, if we have programming or things like that, or if we just need to make a change in how the library is laid out. You'll see we have plenty of tables and seating here. Uh, you will also can just barely tell, but through this glass over here is an interior courtyard that I'll show you a little more uh, specifically in a few moments. This is what the children's services area itself will look like. One of the things that we're putting in uh, here is these sound baffles that you see up in the ceiling here to help keep noise down. One of the things, another one of the things we learned from Orange was that, um, and this was a shock to all of us, children can be noisy. Uh, children's programming can be even noisier than children. So we wanted to make sure that we were doing what we could to make sure that uh, we could keep the noise down or at least keep it more isolated in, in one area. The service desk here is something we don't have at Orange. That's a permanently fixed children's service point. Uh, so that's, that's fairly new too. Also, you can, again, just see over here, this door leads out to a second patio that will be primarily for the children's area. We'll be able to do children's programming out there, but there will also be benches and places for parents or grandparents or caregivers to sit with their kids and uh, give them a chance to be a little noisy and give them a chance to run around in a, in a nice open area like that. So let's take a look overall at what this first floor is going to offer. I know you can't read this unless you've got a screen like you're watching this at the Strand or something, but I can tell you just from the colors what we're looking at here. This yellowish area on this side is the children's area that we saw. The way we've got it planned right now is that this little area here will be our tween collection. That's for the kids who are too old for this area, but not quite old enough for the teen area. To the teen area. We decided that even though this is gonna be the children's area, we would keep large print books on the first floor to make it easy for people who have mobility issues or, or site issues and wanna to get to the large print books and that's what they're really aiming for. So they'll be right there on the main floor, right adjacent to the front entrance. This teal area here and here, these are reading areas that we will have. This one is adjacent to the patio and there's the patio door there. 
This one will be more of a business center where we will have the copier, uh, we'll have the scanner, we'll have things of that nature so that people can do the copying. We'll have uh, some tables here for people to work on and uh, just generally a, a kind of a convenience area. The dark blue here is the work area. We will have a drive up window, which is right adjacent to this working desk here from around the back of the building. And then we'll have uh, multiple entrances here for bringing in things like uh, furniture and big deliveries and that sort of thing. So that's kind of the, the basic layout of the first floor. I'll talk more about what this is in a moment, but this is the uh, courtyard I mentioned. There'll be access to that courtyard from the first floor, of course. On the second floor, we have the adult services area. I'm gonna go back for just a moment. If you imagine going up these stairs right here, now you can see where you will be when you come up to the adult services area. Here again, you see the enclosed courtyard over here. Over here is a service desk for the adult services area. We also have, again, all this glass so that there'll be plenty of natural light coming in here. Through this little area here is a very small but comfortable porch looking out over the, the, uh, the area. There'll be just a few chairs here. This is not for programming or anything like that, but it's again, it's a way of tying in the outside and the inside for the library. During good weather, people will be able to sit out there, read, talk, uh, maybe play a board game if they want to, but just sort of having an area where people can feel like they're part of the library, but still allowing them to, to be uh, outside while they're doing it. On this floor, we will have on the far side over here, basically on the far side of the courtyard, will be our adult services area. You can see this, you can just barely see this, but this is another thing that we're caging from our orange branch, and that is a fireplace. So these, a quiet reading area on the other side of this wall, but the fireplace will be seen from both sides. There'll be some seats seating here on, on this side, and on the other side, as I say, the, the quiet space. Also on the second floor, but on the far other side, on the other side of the courtyard, will be our teen services area. One of the things that we've learned from uh, library experiences around the country is that teen services are closer to adult services than they are to children's services. And so we want to keep them on the same floor and yet still give them some separation. We'll have a teen services specialist and librarian who works out of this office right here so that they'll be with the teens in this area. But this will be a comfortable area for studying, for reading, for, uh, for some programming for kids. We have a, a TV screen here that can be used by multiple people at the same time. So for gaming, that sort of thing. So this will be the, the teen area here. And again, let me, let's take a look at the floor plan. So here you have the courtyard. This area here in, in kind of the brownish area is all kind of adult uh, uh, services, stacks, reading area. This blue area is our quiet study area. This darker brown is public use meeting rooms. So we have one good size meeting room here that seats about a dozen people. This would be good for like, oh, I don't know, an HOA board, uh, maybe a church board, maybe uh, a, a small, some kind of small groups that need committees of various sorts. Uh, we've got this one for about 12 people, this one for about 10, these two for about you know, six, to, six to eight, and then smaller ones here. I see the we will probably have tutors using, using these small rooms a lot, so that's available here. This blue area here is our quiet study room. And I want you to, you can look at the furniture here, but please know we are making a lot of changes in the furniture. This looks really cluttered right now. We are working with the architecture firm. We're gonna make some changes so it's not quite as uh, heavily, heavily uh, furnished as you see here right now. Anyway, um, so again, this is the teen area in the kind of uh, olive drab here. This is uh, work areas for adults, uh, adult services staff. Again, keeping it uh, close to the teens so that we can make sure we, we don't have any uh, issues there. This is a, a staff, uh, staff room here. All of our restrooms in this building are going to be individual units. Um, so we will have plenty of, uh, of restroom facilities. And let's see, what else do I want to mention on this? I think that, that about does. We have escape stairs here too. These will be mostly for staff use. Uh, and then this is where that second elevator that I mentioned is.
let's go to the, the next area. I pointed up uh, when we were looking at the first floor that I would talk about this area. This is what we're calling our learning stairs. And this is an idea we stole, quite frankly, from the Dayton Public Library. They recently renovated their uh, a department store in the downtown area with uh, uh, as their new main library. And one of the features that we all liked from that library was these stairs that will um, act as sort of a, a natural amphitheater for doing programming and lectures and maybe musical events, things like that. Uh, down and provide seating for parents, grandparents with their kids, caregivers, uh, when they just want to sit and maybe look at a book or uh, talk to each other, read, relax, whatever. So these learning stairs will facilitate that. Also on the lower level, I think I'm going to go, yeah, go to the floor plan next. This is our big meeting room, and this will be quite a good size meeting room. It'll seat well over 100 people, uh, auditorium style. Uh, almost 200 actually auditorium style, fewer if we're going to use tables. You'll notice that it, there's an air wall here that we can subdivide that if there's two groups that want to meet, that, that will provide uh, privacy and provide some peace and quiet. Uh, this will be our maker studio here. If you're familiar with our maker studio at the Delaware Library, this will be a place with, that will allow people to do creativity. Uh, we'll have things like 3D printers, vinyl, and uh, laser cutters. We will have um, sewing machines, probably an embroidery machine like we have here, various other pieces of equipment. Our friends in the library, I will say right now, uh, are doing a fundraising campaign to help equip this room and to provide future growth for both this maker studio and for the maker studio at the Delaware Library. So that's an, an ongoing process that I'm sure you're going to be hearing more of from our friends of the library in the days and weeks to come. Speaking of the Friends of the Library, this will be their office space. They, they are, have outgrown the space that we had addressed for them at the Orange Library. So this will give them a considerably larger uh, bit of space here. Friends of the Library book sales will be held out of this space, uh, as well as giving them some more room to work uh, when they're doing other projects. This is going to be... Uh, I, I think it's going to be really handy for the friends because if you've ever been in their little workroom at Orange, you know that there's not enough space. We also have had a real growth in how our outreach services department works. So they need the space that the friends will be giving up at the Orange Library. So this will work nicely for everybody. Uh, we have over in this area, um, this is storage and uh, future growth area. We will be storing uh, a lot of our things like our holiday things that we, we use in other branches, again, to, to free up some space in this area. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention down here is we will also have space for our technology people so that they can work right on the spot and make sure that we don't have issues like with computers and things like that. We have a lot of uh, wall space in here. So uh, one of the first things that's gonna be happening in this library, we hope, is an art show that'll be happening uh, not this fall, but next year. The Friends of the Library are working on a grant for that. And there'll be more details about that to come in the not too distant future. So uh, I'm gonna stop here and ask uh, Nicole, have there been any questions in the uh, uh, chat or anything that I should be aware of or that, that people would like me to answer? Uh, no, not at this time, but that is a good uh, pitch that if you do have questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat and uh, we'll we'll interject. Um, but for now, you can keep on keeping on. Okay, so it's fun to look at the pictures and the drawings and the architectural plans that we've had, but here's where we are right now. Construction is moving along quite nicely. I, again, I have to compliment both Marker, our construction company, and SHP, our architect, because they have been doing a, a terrific job. They've been very consultative with us all through the process. And every other Friday, we have a site visit with uh, some of our staff, and we've had some friends of the library and others who've come along with us on these to take a look at the building as it's been coming along. These pictures were taken at our last site visit, which happened on March 11th. So these are relatively new, I'm sorry, March 4th. So these are uh, relatively new pictures of where we are. Since these pictures were taken, uh, a little bit more has happened. The, the um, more of the walls are in and more of the, the roofing is in place, which means we will be less uh, beholden to the weather 
as things move forward. So, but you can see, as you look at this picture, this picture is um, the, the side of the building where the adult patio that we've talked about is gonna be, that's these doors right here. So this is looking south um, out of the, uh, those main windows there. This is the front of the library. You can see this is where those um, the patio and the, the glass area here is. The, um, the main entrance uh, is right in this area. And so um, down this way will be where the children's area is. This picture was taken on the, of course, on the inside. This is where the learning stairs will be going in. So you can get some idea when you look at how wide those windows are. This is uh, where those learning stairs are going to go, leading down into our lower level, to our meeting room, and to our friends of the library areas. So that just gives you an idea. This building, uh, let me just say, is it will have the most public square footage of any building that we have. Right now, it's a slightly smaller overall in square footage than our main library is, but it'll have more uh, space that's actually open to the public. Our main library is 44,000 square feet. This will be 42,000 square feet spread over three levels. So it's 14,000 square feet per level. Give you some idea, just a, a, the average uh, basic uh, subdivision house is usually 2,500 square feet. So that gives you some idea of where, uh, of how big this space is. And every time I've been on site, I'm sort of awed by how much space there really is here. So we're, we're really excited about this. So I'm seeing now that there are questions popping up in chat. So I'm gonna take a break here and let Nicole start shooting me some questions. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So you, one you already addressed about the square footage of the building. Um, okay. and the other one was, will there be a drive up window? Yes, there will. Uh, not on the side of the building that you can see here, but on the long side and back, there will. Uh, let me get to one of the pages that might actually. Well, no, I don't actually have a show a pic, a picture that shows the uh, the back side of the building. But if we go back to the first floor floor plan, this is the the front of the building that faces onto the main parking lot. The drive up window is right here. There'll be uh, these two little boxes here are the book returns, so, uh, book and materials returns. If, if So you can drop things off there or you can pull right up here and the person who is working at this desk will be able to check in or check out your materials at the drive through window there. The next question is, um, what is the project, uh, the projected completion date? And do we have an idea of how many new jobs this will create? Let me talk about the second one first. We, we, uh, it'll create about 25 new jobs, and that's at a variety of levels from branch manager through um, uh, specialists in children and adult services, as well as um, circulation or branch assist, uh, associates, people who work at the, the service desks. And um, we'll also in pages, people who shelve and keep the, the stacks looking good. Uh, we're also adding uh, a few other people to administration. We already added one person to our facility staff. We'll uh, add another person to our uh, um, communication staff. We'll be adding one more to our IT staff in order to keep all the computers and everything running. So uh, those those jobs are coming forward. We have a, we don't have a specific completion date at this point, and I'll tell you that part of it is because of the weather that we've had. So far, as I said, we started construction, really got underway in June. We've lost about 31 days of construction time to weather. And some of that has been the snow that we've had and the icy conditions. If we, if before we got completely under roof and under uh, siding done, bad rain would stop us uh, from, from working. So that slowed us up. We're, we are still on target to open this fall, but I don't have a specific completion date at this point. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping, for September, but please do not hold me to that. The next question is, um, are you aware of any plans for a walking path connecting Indian Springs to the library? Okay, I have to admit, I'm not sure where Indian Springs is, but I will tell you that we have worked alongside the people who are working on the bike path that's connecting, uh, <laughs> I don't wanna get this wrong, and uh, I don't think Kevin's not on this call, is he? Um, anyway, but, but we are working with them on the bike path to make sure that we have um, bike racks and we have the adequate paths and things like that that connect uh, the, the, the uh, 
uh, the bike route. I, I would assume this is something tied in with that. Uh, but but frankly, I, like I said, not knowing where Indian Springs is, I don't want to, to commit to that. I will check and, and find out, though. Yeah, no, I don't see Kevin on, on this call today, but we okay. can follow up for sure. Um, do we know any of the businesses that are planned around the library, um, perhaps in the development, perhaps at the corners of Holman Stites, um, and also the follow up on the Turkey Hill? Okay, so the Turkey Hill is not uh, is off the table. Um, the the um, Middlebury Crossing, the, the subdivision that was planned for this area, is um, still on the books. I'm not sure exactly where it stands right now. I, um, so I can't, I can't speak to that. I know that the idea was that there would be about 60 plus apartment units back in this area. And then a small strip mall here that would include professional offices, perhaps a coffee shop, uh, sandwich shop, maybe those kinds of uh, businesses right along here. Uh, where that stands at the moment, I can't speak to because I really don't know. We know across the street is a, um, storage area for high-end automobiles. It's, um, I'm trying to remember what it's called, um, Horsepower Farms. And that's over here on uh, the south side of uh, Home Road. Over on this corner is new uh, Liberty Grand apartments and uh, condo units going in this way. And that's actually goes all the way back to Sawmill Road. It's a, a very large uh, project that's going in over there. And I am not entirely sure what is Kitty Corner from the library, to be honest with you. Uh, so I, I can't speak to that one right now. Uh, John is on today's call. If John, if you want to unmute and interject anything, you are more than welcome to. But if you want to stay muted, if you're doing other things, that's okay too. While you um, work on that, we'll go to the next question, which was, Will there be toys and activities area separate from the children's programming in the children's area, similar to what we have at Orange? I'm glad you asked that question because I should have mentioned it. We have planned um, uh, what we did, uh, I believe, and if Kelly's on, no, Kelly's not on this call, but there's an area called the uh, discovery tables over here that we will have uh, specifically for um, kids to play uh, while they're in here. We will have some toys. We are uh, slowly bringing back toys to our other locations right now. Back over here through that door, uh, yeah, as I noticed, this was the patio area. Through this area is an actual children's performance and storytelling and story time area. Again, something else we learned from Orange was to have that area separate and have it actually be able to be closed off so that we can keep the, the sounds that come out of the kids singing, the, the fun that goes on in the story time, but not have that bleed out into the rest of the library. So that area is right back in here and it is actually separate from the, the children's area itself. There is also gonna be some fun areas out on the patio itself. Um, not, not toys per se, but fun areas, I can, get, I can tell you that. That's a good, that's a good tease. Um, question about the meeting rooms. How would we um, schedule meeting rooms uh, if we wanted to use them on a monthly basis or otherwise? We have a system uh, in place right now called Communico that allows you to book meeting rooms for the, the current locations. Uh, and we will be adding Liberty to that as soon as we have dates when we know that people actually can use them. We do have some regulations on what you have to agree to in order to use the rooms. We don't allow, for example, um, um, multi-level marketing uh, events in the, in the rooms. Uh, we don't allow weddings or things like that in, in the rooms. But if you have, like I said, a homeowners association board, you have a, a school committee, you have a PTO group, you have uh, uh, any kinds of organizations like that that need meeting space, you'll be able to book the space. We have working relationships with uh, Columbus State for doing uh, English for speakers of another language and Toastmasters at the uh, Orange Branch. We will, we, we will be happy to talk to people about those kinds of ideas as well. Generally, there's a limit on the number of times you can book the rooms at any given time. So again, there are regulations to this, but we will be making the rooms available to the public. Uh, and we will have a communicable 
login for just about all of those meeting spaces that I pointed out. So that if you wanted to you book the 12 person room for a board meeting, or if you wanted to book the 200 person room for a poetry reading or something like that, a book signing, you could do that. Uh, and as long as it's not already booked, uh, it'll be available. And uh, I'm, Nicole's nodding because she actually manages that communicable program. And I'm hoping, I, I was hoping she would keep nodding, which meant I, I was getting it right. You did great, yes. And I think that the only other thing, yeah, with those working relationships would be uh, outside of the typical um, event scheduler that we have that's available to the public going through the branch manager. Um, right. But right now, um, anyone can actually book rooms on our website. Um, mm -hmm. DelawareLibrary.org and you find book a room or our uh, community meeting rooms and you can book them online. So that same um, availability will be coming for Liberty. The question that nobody's asked yet and that has come up in a number of, uh, of these programs, and I, I do want to make, make sure I mention this, the current Powell Library, it's located on uh, Liberty Road, is not closing. We will re, we're going to make some changes in what it does, it's gonna be a lot closer to what you, if you know our Ostrander branch library, it's gonna be closer to that library, how we how we use that library. Um, it, programming is not gonna happen in that, in that Powell library anymore, but it'll still be there for, we'll still have a collection of materials there, you'll still be able to pick up your holds, we'll still have computers in there, you'll still have comfortable seating, uh, magazine collections, the, the DVDs, all that sort of thing. But it, I, we're going to move the programming, the children's events, that sort of thing, to this library where we have more space. And we're going to do some rearranging and some retrofitting of the Powell Library. Probably not for a while because it's going to cost a little money, but we will be, but that library is not closing. I do want to make sure that that word gets out. Um, it will still be available to the people who come to uh, enjoy and rely on that library. George, those are all the questions that I have currently in the chat box. I don't know if there were other um, recent pictures that you had at the end of your slideshow, but we can uh, continue to open it up to more questions. Or if nope, the only questions I had, pictures I had, were the ones I took uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, these construction in progress, but uh, that's where we are now. Discussion and questions. And if there's anyone else, you can feel free to um, unmute yourself and ask a question. If you're comfortable doing that, you can also continue to put it in the chat. Um, if any of our friends who have been working on this project, I know we have some of those on the call today. We have board members on the call today. Um, so if anyone wants to um, uh, unmute and say hi, feel free. You're welcome. I know our architect is here, Jeffrey Sackenheim, who I've been working with for quite a while. Uh, and again, I have to, I, I just want to say this, I, I've worked with architects a lot uh, over the years, not, not as much as, as some people, but I'm, you know, I have never seen architects who've been as willing to listen as SHB has, and they have really taken the ideas that the public and that the staff gave them and run with them in ways that I think are going to make for a much, uh, a much better library experience for everybody. Uh, I got to know SHP during, they, they gave us some pro bono help during the levy campaign. Shay McMahon, who's on this call, was one of the people we worked with at SHP. Um, and then we've got, we've had this uh, wonderful construction supervisor, Michelle Walters, who uh, we work with. And we meet with the architect and the, uh, the contractors every Friday to go through where we are. And uh, so there's no surprises. It's been a, a good process. Oh, there's Shay. I see. I just saw his picture pop up on my, on my screen there. Thanks for all your kind words, and, and we would echo those right back. It's been a joy to work with your uh, library community and your community in general uh, throughout this process. It's uh, quickly, very quickly become one of our favorite projects. So thank, <laughs> you, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Well, again, thank you. And I got to thank, too, the people who came out to our public meetings. They, they happened like two months before um, the pandemic hit. And so it gave us time to work with it in a, while, in a lot of ways, but the, the input we got from those meetings was invaluable. A lot of the things that you see there, the, uh, the, the spacing of the children's area from the adult area, the, uh, the outdoor use of the outdoors, the, the courtyard, all those ideas came through from those meetings. And uh, we really do appreciate the, the input we got from the community. I don't see any new numbers popping up in chat. And are there any questions coming up, Nicole? Nope, that ends the questions that I see. Well, then I want to be respectful of everybody's time who's on this call. And thank you for participating. 
I'm going to reiterate that this uh, information, this this uh, webinar will be available at the DelawareLibrary.org slash location slash liberty plus at our YouTube page, which is the DCDL, all one word. Um, and I, you see my email address on the screen there. I am, and that's my direct phone number. That's the phone that rings on my desk. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, suggestions, you want to donate to the Friends of the Library, feel free to give me a call. <laughs> uh, and uh, again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Nicole, for your, your help in getting this uh, organized and set up. And uh, as I always say at the end of our radio show, uh, also thanks to the Friends for sponsoring our radio show, we will see you in the stacks. <laughs>